Yo, 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 big kiss back up in here. I found another beautiful edit for y'all, man. Somebody named O Winter has made a dope ass Drake vs. Kendrick was a movie type edit. I just want to go over it with y'all to see, you know, how how was how he uh cut it up. So let's check it out, y'all. We're gonna check this thing out together. Let's roll. Everyone has put in their two cents on this beef, and I mean, how could I not join in? This whole saga was like the heavyweight matchup everyone had been waiting for. Even though it felt kind of random, these two haven't been on a track together since the Obama administration, so everyone took that as a sign that something had to be up. Combine that with vague shots being thrown for the last decade, and you've got a beef that was only inevitable. The song that finally brought everything to light was First Person Shooter, and it finally set things off. I do hate this song now, because TikTok really knows how to drive something into the ground but it was cool to see drake and j cole on the track again j cole was like man i love being a part of this big three of rappers me drake kendrick we're all so cool while drake was like <laughs> i am the best j cole is cool or whatever and what is a kendrick lamar jermaine no matter how hard they try they cannot make me hate you my brother you've been one of my favorites since i was like six workout used to stay on the radio anytime i was driving with my parents but i think we can be honest about seven minute drill being kind of trash the beat was calm you had some good bars in general but the actual disses were straight up lies and very weak you said to pimp a butterfly put people to sleep you said no one would be talking about kendrick if it weren't for the two of you come on man i am in the minority that respects you for apologizing but at the same time it's a rap beef. You can't do that, bro. But I digress. On the flip side, we all knew about Future and Metro <laughs> Boomin's album dropping for a- Hey, he played that shit safe, boy. He got up out of there. <laughs> he said, look. He said, I got a career. I got a- uh -uh. Good minute, and a lot of people looked forward to it. But I just never thought a musical nuke would drop on it while I was playing Persona 3. Thank you to What's the Dirt for having what was probably the most concise video I could go to after going, Damn, what did Drake do? After hearing what Kendrick had to say about him, in addition to just everyone else getting their hits in across the album. Hearing like that for the first time was just a different experience, and it had me playing it anytime I hopped in the car. Going to work, supermarket going to school Kendrick went crazy future also went crazy and Metro obviously did his thing with the production and he even got some hits in on at the end but then everything really started to pop off uh oh like that had it like that had to Drake's track me. leaked and I thought push-ups was a pretty solid response nothing yeah, career ending up, for Kendrick boy, I, I love but it showed Drake standing his ground with some good shots at Kendrick he also managed to throw shots at Rick Ross who had released a track of his own the Metro bar is just gonna be something that's remembered forever good bars in general very catchy and a good opening from him but then he dropped the tailor-made freestyle which was like a Pokemon being confused and hitting itself <laughs> I don't know why he thought pulling out AI Tupac and Snoop Dogg who is very much alive they did what seemed what? like it would be some diabolical tactic against kendrick obviously i understand he was using two west coast icons to egg him on and get him to respond but in the end it just resulted in people making fun of him for it and throughout the whole battle was one of the dumbest moves he made and it sucks because i thought the instrumental for this one was fire and drake had a good verse on it too but he got ordered to take it down by tupac's estate and if i'm being honest a lot I don't like Teller me. I don't I I I don't like it. I can't even listen to it. It just sound like somebody put it together with a spatula. Out of the time I forget that this one even came out. So those two facts pretty much sum up how I felt about it. After weeks of silence, Euphoria was exactly what I wanted out of Kendrick. He came out the shadows and just said, let's do it. I know Drake poked fun at him saying that he needed to come out with some quintuple entendres or something, but genuinely, Kendrick cooked up some octuple entendres across the tracks that he released. I was a little heated when this one first dropped because I thought that first little section was going to be the vibe for the whole track. But then the beat dropped yeah. and I said, yeah, this yeah. has been the disc that I revisited the most because it I think that was for everybody. When he started off slow, everybody was like, damn, why you had to do this? Until that motherfucker came in, it was like, oh, okay, I get it, I get it. 
is simply tough. I like that Kendrick didn't shy away from his weird voices and showing off his personality. Let me see you push a teeth. And what is it, the brakes? Has had me in a chokehold because of it. Right. And it was hard. There's no question that the bars were present, but I think the biggest part of this track was Kendrick showing signs that he is one of the biggest haters in history. I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. I hate the way that you sneak this. If I catch flight, it's going to be direct. This had me beating my chest and running around my room. He just went for Drake's head for six minutes. An absolute win from Kendrick. Then he followed it up and flipped the script on Drake in two ways. Taking his usual timestamp location title scheme and dropping another track before Drake could respond. This was another track that flew under the radar which most likely comes down to sampling and it not dropping on streaming. I remember listening to it at work and just feeling so eerie. And once again, Kendrick was flowing. 616 in LA is just a good song, but the disses on this one feel so much more surgical and calculated. Telling Drake that this entourage he's known for surrounding himself with may not actually be all that it's cracked up to be was crazy mm. enough, but saying that someone may be sliding Kendrick info the whole entire time, I was getting <sighs> paranoid myself. Can't Tusi slide out of this one was one of my favorite bars on this track. I love this beat a lot, and Kendrick had cooked again. My absolute favorite part of this one though was that it was produced in in part by Jack Antonoff, who is known for primarily working with Taylor Swift pretty much all of the time, which in a way makes this track Taylor made. I'ma tell you all something. I spent a couple hours at the hospital because my brother folded and coming home to this dropping as someone favoring Kendrick in this battle was painful. I can be transparent enough to say that Drake cooked. He actually cooked with this one that this was the red button he had been threatening Kendrick with. Drake teased this one at the end of push-ups and that was a double-edged sword because yeah it generated hype and had me singing uh, I was really, really trying to keep it PG. but Drake showed his hand way too early. This was the only track to have a music video and I mean crushing the good kid Mad City van it's iconic there's no denying that. I just like how each part of this one evolved. The first part was pretty tame had a short bar in there. That little weekend part with the uh, uh, also made me laugh. Part two, that was just Drake rapping his ass off. Let's be honest. The flow was impeccable. Cooked Rick Ross again, badly, and just crushed ASAP Rocky. When I heard his verse on We Still Don't Trust You, I was like, you're getting your hits in too. Was there a questionable bar or two on this one? Yes. Because what do you mean k Dot is only hidden hard when Baby Keem put his pen to it? I am very certain Baby Keem did not have a hand in writing all right. Yeah. These walls, I, uh, you, swimming pools, uh, money trees, loyalty, nah. I, I, Later. Bitch, don't kill my vibe. But I can't see. I can't see Baby King writing nothing for Kendrick Lamar. I can't see it, bro. I believe Baby King, just an artist for uh, Kendrick Lamar, is trying to develop. You know what I mean? I can't. I can't see it, bro. It's too much. Cause I think he a young cat. It's too much old school references in Kendrick Lamar's raps for him to be like. You know what I mean? Like you. I just don't see it. I can't see it, bro. Good politics, ADHD, you get my point. But like I said, he was rapping, which is what you need to be able to do to stand your ground against someone like Kendrick. Personally, the third and final part was my favorite. It had my favorite instrumental and my favorite flow out of the whole thing. Kendrick just opened his mouth. Someone go hand him a Grammy right now. Actually got a laugh out of me. Pretty bad. This was some of my favorite rapping from Drake period as he broke down Kendrick, his obsession with Drake's blackness and how he's the one parading around for the white man. I thought it was impeccable how he switched the Prince and Michael Jackson angle on Kendrick himself. And then he casually just said that Kendrick put the paws on his wife and I was distraught. My eyes popped out of my head and I was just like, how does he come back from this? He might disappear for another couple of weeks ago. Kendrick, how are you going to come back from this one? Kendrick, Kendrick. <laughs> Uh oh, the boogie man is here. The boogie man is here, bro. I love when people do this to the videos, bro. I love this shit, bro. I can't imagine how crazy it had to be to be at OVO HQ, getting lit, popping bottles, saying, yeah, we got him, and be greeted by this not even an hour later. <laughs> I don't know how many songs I've heard over the years that I could describe as sinister, but this might be the most sinister song I've ever listened to <laughs> in my life. Kendrick had to be in a pitch black room with a single candle lit writing this one because it's just diabolical. Starting the track Gosh. with an apology to Adonis for the simple fact that Drake is his father wasn't even the worst part of it all. Do you think if you had a better dad, you would be able to read? This was 
just another six minutes of hatred, but a level of hatred that I didn't know was feasible. Kendrick Lamar Duckworth broke down all of Drake's shortcomings and negative aspects of his being through the lens of his family, whose structure is already pretty fragile. Damn, he told Drake's boy. mom that he thinks- Hey, Dennis got a big ass beard, bro. That nigga beard big as a bitch. <laughs> he should die, and he is a freak. Told his father that he not Good, only look blames at him it. for Drake being such a bad person, but also tells him that Drake simply uses him to validate his identity. Oh, how could we forget him calling Drake a pedophile, and that they got some freaky stuff going on in that mega mansion of his. He said it's only a matter of time until they raid his place and somehow through all that the bar that really got everyone going was kendrick saying that he has an 11 year old daughter out there somewhere when i heard him say dear baby girl i was like no way drake got himself into this situation again and honestly at first i don't think i took it too seriously this is kendrick lamar the king of entendres and layered bars that we're talking about here i imagine that Kendrick thinks that Drake is just such a vile human being, and with the lifestyle he takes up, it only makes sense for him to have another Adonis kind of situation out in the world somewhere, and that him being such a horrible father is just a part of his nature, because it's all he's witnessed and all he knows to be himself. Hence Kendrick saying, Hey, 21 Savage always shaking his head and shit, yeah. Tight shit, tight shit, tight shit, tight shit, type shit. Type shit about them other kids that's out there hoping that you come. come but then he also says drake lied about his daughter so maybe she is out there somewhere this track was heavy i'm gonna hear this in my nightmares or something <laughs> shout out yeah. alchemist for one of the most iconic beats of all time this will probably be held up as the greatest diss track of all time eventually i never mm -hmm. thought anyone would ever outdo push it to you when it came to dissing drake but here we are then kendrick dropped again this was his victory lap as soon as i heard that what's that on that beat oh I knew it was up from there. Kendrick fully embracing the West Coast vibe on this track, doubling down on Drake, not truly being one for the culture and saying, you so freaky ass nigga. Everyone's been bumping this one. This track has everyone outside, mayors playing it at events, you name it. I am not from California, never even stepped foot in the state and it had me like this in my room. On top of it being a genuine hit, I never thought I'd hear some history in the middle of a track like this. Kendrick started giving a whole lesson to then go on to how Drake gets cool with a bunch of Atlanta rappers so he can eventually just steal from them and i was just like hmm okay as he wasn't even wrong if you look at it a certain way i'm not even a numbers guy when it comes to music in general i just hate numbers but this one has smashed a whole bunch of records and went number one plain and simple kendrick bodied him i would say last but not least but that's just a lie finally Drake came back at Kendrick one last time and flipped his own title scheme on him with the heart part six. This may have been one of the worst responses of all time. One of the worst diss tracks of all time. Maybe not as bad as Kanye's like that remix though. What were you doing? He slid in talking about some, yo dot, I got you. And I promise Kendrick did not bat an eye in his direction. But back to the track, it was essentially a white flag from Drake consisting of a bunch of jokes that could be found on Twitter, a really bad understanding of one of the deeper tracks on Mr. Morale, and a corny outro. I knew it was bad when people started saying, oh yeah, Drake definitely wrote this one. This Epstein angle was the shit I expected. It's just not a line that should make you go, yeah, this is it, in the studio. Why would you say that? Of course you felt yeah, just like information. Everything was- Just like Rick Ross said, you expect for motherfuckers to be banging at in the club you expect for somebody to play a record in the club that you explaining yourself how you not a pdfl man nah 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 not the way to go liar. you see your mole was actually a mole from us drake let's be uh, aubrey aubrey let's be honest here buddy there's no way you think what did you say again you were some kind of five-star general nah man just no no that's not something you can cook up i'm sorry he did make a point in saying that kendrick's wife did not come out to dismiss any of the allegations but aside from that this track was an embarrassment and that was it for now these two are as close to being polar opposites as one can imagine and seeing them finally go at it directly made for something special. They represent the two aspects of hip hop that seem to be at contention a lot of the time. The commercial popularity aspect versus the artistry and that's a big part of what made it so interesting. I'm going to reveal a deep dark secret to you all. Up until the age of 12, I did not know that music existed outside of the radio and the music videos that I watched on YouTube. I honestly don't know why but I will tell you my eyes 
eyes opened in eighth grade and my life changed forever. Kendrick was one of the first artists that I went out of my way to listen to. Damn hadn't released too long before and I just did a very surface level look at his music but it hit for me instantly. And as time has gone on, I've only come to appreciate Kendrick more and more as an artist. He is truly a poet with such an electric yet tame personality that can convey some of the deepest introspective lyrics ever. This man managed to create an anthem about the black struggle, and it goes hard. Mr. Morrell and the Big Steppers dropped on what was probably one of the hardest nights of my life and helped put life into a perspective that I really needed at the time. Kendrick speaking on his own healing journey and learning to grow past his trauma while also embracing it and under understanding how it's made him who he is, spoke to me so seriously at that very moment. It's why Count Me Out is one of my top songs from him. But then Kendrick said, I want to end Drake, end his whole career. I hate him. And it sucks that it took this beef for people to go revisit that album or actually check it out for the first time because it's honestly great. And if you haven't, go give it a spin. When it comes to Drake, I don't like Drake. I'll show you how many like songs I have from Drake <laughs> on Spotify. I like Drake, but I don't like Drake. When this whole thing kicked off, I made sure to not really let my bias be a factor, but it was hard at times. You see, as the years have gone on, I've come to care about Drake less and less. For all the dogs, put me to sleep during my first listen, and I wish that was an exaggeration. It might be because I saw someone describe him as COD in terms of a repackaging of the same things with each release, or it might be him being the Majin Buu of the industry, even appropriating my culture. Yo, listen, oh, I'm so excited to finally get a chance to be on a snap, you know, do some mistakes. April 29th, the team set, the team dead, and trust me, headshot them bomb outside. I'm joking, kinda. There's never been a moment in my life where I was like, I want to know more about Aubrey Graham, where he comes from, and how he became the man that he is today. And that could very well be that it's because I'm not a biracial Jewish Canadian. But I also think Drake's generalness and accessibility somehow makes him even more inaccessible. And that was a large aspect of this beef for me. When Kendrick said, I like Drake with the melodies, I don't like Drake when he act tough, I said, you know what, Kendrick? Me too. And I found that even funnier when I realized that, to me at least, the best part of Family Matters was that third part where Drake was being what? Melodic. I don't want to just turn this into bashing Drake because he's as big of an artist as he is for a reason. But realistically, his pen is nowhere near Kendrick's. And I yeah. hope that in me saying that, the OVO goons do not show up in black vans outside of my house. Kendrick won because he was able to break down Drake's character in such a full-on display that you gotta be fooling yourself to think otherwise. And don't get me wrong, there's a chance both of them have some wicked demons in their closets, but I've come to accept that famous people are crazy. Big thanks to this guy right here. And in reality, we never truly know anyone. I needed to update the outro of this video because I recorded everything else a month ago at this point. And oh my God, is this video late? Real life just gets in the way sometimes. But yeah, man, he did a beautiful job with this breakdown. Y'all go subscribe to O Winter. Matter of fact, I'm gonna leave the link in the description. Um, y'all let me know how y'all feel about the the video, the edit. It was dope. I think it was dope. You know what I mean? We already know about the battle. Uh, I just wanted to hit y'all with something um, between the TikTok videos. So yeah, Big Kish signing out. I'm gone.